Hi and welcome to this short primer on the notion of a pivot table and its uses within Excel. A uh, pivot table itself has been always seen as probably one of the most powerful tools in Excel but also one of the most intimidating one because people think that it has a lot of setup to be done to implement it properly. That is true but that being said a lot of it is intuitive once you get one or two examples under your belt. So to kind of break the ice as such, what I've actually proposed we do is take a look at a finished pivot table. Now, this pivot table is not to the scale of some industrial pivot tables and so forth like that. But we can see here, looking at our screen here, that I will. this pivot table is based on okay this table here of tapes and records vinyl for those um, old enough to remember that um, for a small record store before iTunes and all that and before mp3s but basically you can see here that you've got artist album genre and so forth like that and we got the sales of tapes and we got the sa sales of vinyl and basically which is the best seller of between the two and the gross revenue the VAT and the net revenue and I will go through the steps of setting one up but we can see here that eventually we can get to a point where I can have an intu a very intuitive um, screen in front of me and if I click their Beatles okay the Beatles band okay we can see that they sold 70 tapes and the sum of their net revenue for those tapes was 1544875. Okay, so obviously, um, are the net revenue now that will be both objects. Now, obviously, I could change around that, but we can see that given this here, right, we can summarize that pretty quick. Okay, and obviously, there is the notion that we do need to have set up in that. And we can see here the right hand side, this screen here, pivot table fields. This allows us flexibility to see what is in our pivot table, but also to, to move them about. Supposing you, you just don't, you're not really too worried about the sum of the net revenue, but you do want to see how many tapes and how many vinyl they sold. Okay, I could drag that away out of there and we can see the sum of tapes, but then we can drag in other issues or not issues but fields into here so even if we wanted to drag in okay vinyl revenue okay price per tapes tapes and we've got another one there vinyl and we can see there okay that it goes into sum of vinyl and you can see there okay the sum the total sum of queen okay was sold that basically okay it sold 61 tapes 63 vinyl Okay, and if we wanted to go through the artists, we can see that. Now, this here object is known as a slicer. And you can implement slicers into a pivot table at some point once you have it set up properly. And obviously, knowing around here, knowing your way around this dialog box is important too. But again... It boils back to having the notion of having practice and taking the time to practice through it. And don't be worried if you get things wrong. Okay, let's put it this way. Supposing if I dragged some vinyl and I put that into rows. Uh-oh, now it's kind of all messed up. But we can just as easily drag it back or drag it around to wherever I want it to. Okay, we can see here column label. Now it doesn't make much sense here. But we can change things around. Okay, so supposing if I wanted to, right? Supposing if I wanted to, rather than seeing the sum of tapes and the sum of vinyl, okay, what you might want to do is see, okay, what is the net revenue per per band? Okay, and you can see there, the sugar, okay, it gives me 871. Blur, 889.1. 8, 8, okay, pink, 805.8. Pink Floyd, okay? And supposing if it was a case that you wanted to see maybe the genre as opposed to the actual the band themselves, okay? So supposing if we clicked on genre and dragged that down here 
and got rid of artist okay we can see now okay now I need to get rid of this too okay but we can see now okay so if I I can, I can see now all of those that Hindi and so forth like that and what um it gives you the notion there and obviously if I, you can see there that I've got the filter to total and so forth like that and obviously if I wanted to sort it okay and obviously more sorting options that I could do it in that way okay but obviously um what was I going to say we don't want to do that at this point in time but also too okay you I did say something the notion of a slicer which I will show how to um the context of but supposing if we did go into remembering that if you click then this is for everything within Excel if you are within the object of Excel that you are working with you will always see that it comes up with the applicable menu options like I'm there and I know that the cursor is within my pivot table but then supposing if I clicked outside it, note these two values here, when I click outside the actual table, they're gone. Okay, so it is a case that if I click inside it and you do that for anything, if I generated, let's put it this way, if I generated here, okay, and this is a small aside, but if I generated, let's just say here, okay, a quick, um, rec a, a quick pie chart okay 3d pi okay this is just to show that aspect okay and if i clicked on there you can see there okay that what was it going to say the design of and the format of what was it going to say this object shows up there okay but if i wanted to get rid of that okay and if i wanted to move back click away but in order to work and edit with any object you must be clicked on it okay so if I click on there it brings up all the relevant details that I need to do for my pivot table so what I'm actually going to do is is this is I'm going to get rid of my chart first of all and then I want to just do one last thing but then I'm actually going to go into a separate video and show you how to set this up but I just want to show one thing here is pivot table analysis and if you insert a slicer, okay, it allows you, okay, let's just say if I inserted a slicer for genre, and click that there, okay, and it allows me then to create a very clickable, and we can see there metal, now it only gives one at a time, okay, I don't know, you know what I mean, can it do two at a time, yes it can. And how it can do two at a time is very simple. The use of the control key. So if I click on the three of them there, it gives three of them. But if I click on one, then it goes back. And let's just see what happens when I press the shift key. Okay, when I press the shift key, it goes to that. But when I press rock, and I press the control key, and I go to another one. Okay, it will do the two of them. So if I want the two non-consecutive ones, you would press down the control button. But if I wanted to select, let's say, from ND to pop, I'd press the shift button, and that would show that. Okay, that's the use of a slicer. Now, obviously, there's filters and so forth like that. To clear the filter, basically, it clears the old filter and so forth like that. Okay, so what was it? And multi-select, okay, it allows for the multi-select. If you just wanted to get rid of that, okay, it will only allow one at a time. But if you click on that, it allows selection of many at a time. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do now is stop this video and obviously then show how I set up this pivot table from the very, very start. Okay, so you can see probably now the benefits of doing a pivot table, but obviously we need to go through into how we do that pivot table. Okay, so talk to you in the next video. Take care and talk to you then. Okay, bye.